Welcome everyone to the San Francisco Open, brought to you by Parsafe Productions in association with the Disc Golf Pro Tour and the PDGA. Sponsored by Absolute Extracts and Innova Champion Discs. We're here with the third round of the Women's FPO Lead Card, featuring Katrina Allen at minus 13, Paige Pierce at minus eight, Paige Bjorkas at minus two, and Madison Walker at minus one. At the Glen Eagles Disc Golf Course in San Francisco, I'm Sarah Hokum here with Paige Pierce to call the shots. Thank you for having me. We're up to hole one. Tell us about it. 660 feet. This is a par four. Slightly left to right slope with OB on the left and the right side. Players are gonna wanna get up there about three to 400 feet, leaving themselves an easier approach for a left to right approach on the downhill side to get that birdie. Yeah, it's kind of nice because this first shot just lets you open up. Cat takes the D2. She's really comfortable with this just stability. She puts it out in the middle and lets it hyzer. Honestly, the more left you are, the better as long as you're not OB. But the farther you are to the left, it kind of opens up that second shot and you have a much easier shot at the green. This is my Biofusion Defender. I'm trying to follow Kat's line more or less and just get over there in the open on the left. Paige with her Ballista Pro. She puts this one low and hot and a really good move on it. She gets a skip even and by the 400 foot marker. A little bit of a tailwind today. It's pretty cold out. Conditions are calm with just a little bit of wind. Everybody likes the backhand here. Yeah, it's a little more room to work. I feel like I saw a lot of players throwing the backhand on the drive and then quite a few throwing the sidearm on the approach. But Madison here is grabbing her star firebird and she's actually going over the OB. Um, I think she wanted that one to fly a little bit farther forward before it hooked up. But still, she's going to have a circle two putt. And if that tree's not in her way, she will have a chance. And this is Paige following Madison's line a little bit higher though. And this is her Ballista Pro. So she's going to get a little more distance out of it, but she's down on that right side. Tough to get the, the full distance with, with a hyzer. Yeah. You know, you almost have to flex it and then it tends to go a little too far right as we just saw with uh, Paige Bjorkis. Cat here with her M2. She's going for the swooping Anheuser, matching the shape of the hill. This is actually a really good play, I think. Um, I'm trying to match hers just a little bit higher with my Marshall. And we're all going to have similar putts in distance, but just from different sides of the green. A little slope on that green, so that's that's that down log there can certainly cause some rollaways if you hit it uh, with any kind of speed. Ooh, looked like a good bid from Cat, just a tiny bit right. And Madison, she got this hole yesterday, so we'll see if she can get it back-to-back -back days. Good bid, just a tiny bit to the left. Good height on the putt, though. That's something that I always like to see is that you gave it a chance. Nice clean up there by Bjerkis. Tapping in the par. Madison had a little bit of heat coming in, so she has a little bit of a tester here into a crosswind. Jams it in. Great putt. It's always intimidating when you see that flag blowing. No matter what direction it is, when you just see the constant movement, it, it just uh, kind of gets in your head a little bit. And the wind out here is um, variable. It gusts quite regularly. So sometimes if you just wait a second, the wind will change or stop. Yeah, I saw that quite a few times this weekend, actually. You know, in tournament play, you have 30 seconds. So, you know, just waiting 20 seconds, you might get a little break in the wind. Pars around for the group. 
Uh, we did see Jessica Weiss get that birdie today. No movement. Uh, Cat is still has a commanding lead at minus 13, but with Paige Pierce on the card and her reputation for catching those late streaks, he's going to make this very fun. <laughs> very, very fun. I try to. Hole two is crazy. Yeah, hole two is 279 with OB all along the right side. The gap itself is uh, you got to play it really high and tight to a really large tree so that you can get over those blocker trees just early and right on the green. Um, you've also got sloping from left to right, uh, kind of a mounded plateau green. So high and tight is typically the play. Cat here going nice and wide. She's kind of had the same sort of release all the rounds, you know, I think the play is to be, like you said, a little higher and tighter so you can get up on that green. She's going to leave herself with circle's edge putt on the low right side. It's intimidating out this gap. Ooh, a little bit of tree shrubbage there. Yeah, it's intimidating out the gap because the uh, that's such an early hit if you miss by, you know, really just a foot or two. Um, nobody wants to have that as their second shot. Right. It, you know, like you said, you want to go high and tight, but if you see high is the branch and left is that giant trunk. So you're pushing an awful shot to throw the great shot. Madison here is now throwing her starfire bird again. Great angle on this. She, she doesn't like it, but I'm up. not sure why. Well, if you don't get it quite high enough, you don't get over that ups upslope um and i don't know if she could tell or not but she actually did get up it she might have thought that she did not <laughs> those pyramids always call it causing those nasty rollaways yeah you and almost have to play them to below it yeah you totally do unless you're running it like madison Wow. Great two, early in the round, elevated basket on a drive she didn't particularly love, so it's got to be a good feeling to get that putt in. We also saw Kona, Holly, and Zoe get this birdied on the day. So Madison grabs a stroke there on Bjerkus. And... Uh, Cat and Paige at the top are going to stay within five. <laughs> Beer just making jokes. Yeah, it's pretty constant out there. You know, Paige and I actually had a jump putt battle this round, so oh. side bets were being made. <laughs> <laughs> Always makes it more interesting. Yeah. Moving on to hole three. 347 feet downhill, probably got a 30 to 40 foot downhill slope with OB along the right side. The basket is kind of tucked out of sight off the tee and there's a slope from left to right to an OB area that is easy to hit and roll off of putts. Madison Walker up first. This is a rock. I actually gave her this one from Texas 10 tour back in the day. Old school rock. As you can hear, she says she grip locked it, threw it through the trees, but it actually punched through and the spotter weights are safe. Wow. And she's I thought that was a goner. happy with that. Yeah. <laughs> that's a, one of those bonus ones. She actually commented that, well, I guess that's what happens when you throw it as hard as you can. <laughs> <laughs> so katrina here with her m2 she's thrown this hole so well all weekend and again just pretty identical to the past two rounds and she's not even really gonna have to putt to bullseye life as for me i've been throwing gatekeeper on this one which is a mid and i've been coming up deep so i thought today i would go with my putter and uh, just trust it to flip late. As you said, it's down the hill and late breaking. Um, pin so, high. Yeah, pin high inside the circle on the on the right side. And Paige Bierkus is throwing her Maverick here. 
A little low. She had a good amount of speed, so it got a little bit of skid, but she is going to have a hard putt coming up. And here's her first chance to win one. Did you bet, bet on this one? No, just overall. How, whoever hits the most jumpers during the round. Does it, does it count if you hit metal? No. No. Nope. Mm. So... Here you are from just outside the circle? Just inside. Uphill inside the circle at the edge. The hardest putt in disc golf, if you ask me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> when you can't put forth that extra little oomph in the step, uh, it does add a little difficulty. Great birdie. Thank you. Paige to test her to save par. Unfortunately, a little bit high. She'll be carding a bogey. And her race with Madison and yourself for third is now going to be jeopardized a little bit. Always nice to sneak up from that chase card. Yeah, we, I won't lie, we were looking at your scores the whole round, just checking out how you were <laughs> doing. We know when uh, world champion Sarah Hokum's on the chase card, it's uh, never safe. Katrina with the tap in birdie, and we will be moving on to hole four. Our leaders ex extending their lead from the rest of the field with the only two birdies on the field. Now Katrina will be at n minus 14 my and minus 9 for Paige. Bjerkus back one more and Madison pulls ahead. On to hole 4. This is a par 4, 507 feet. The fairway moves right to left, favoring a righty backhand. Heiser, and then the second shot is a left to right, favoring a sidearm. Some players are going to push deep into the woods and play a more wooded second shot. The open part of the fairway, though, is a backhand and then a sidearm. And this is one of the few holes where, honestly, maybe the only hole um, that I've ever played where the women have the farther throw than the guys do. Yeah, the guys are paying a par three just into the woods. And the ladies are playing a par four that's about 100 feet further. Yeah. I, so, I think that's a great concept. I think so, too. Women's tees don't always have to be shorter. They just have to be the right distance. Right. So that we're not having tweener holes. And Katrina, trying to get closer to the basket, doesn't quite get it high enough. And she's going to be in that sand trap. Um, I made sure to make sand... an adjustment after seeing that You know, yeah. a little bit higher. There's several sand traps and a green um, over by the basket to kind of navigate away from. Madison here looking to fly one over the green, over the sand trap, but it kind of gets a little drop down with the wind. Like you said, it's really gusty here and that disc looked great out of her hand, but it's going to end up in the hazard. Yeah, a lot of players playing the straight line. I found a lot of uh, success from that just early left line. You don't even have to throw mm -hmm. it that far off the tee to get a look at birdie. But choose your own adventure. Everyone likes their own routes. Speaking of their own routes, Kat here going to go through the woods <laughs> instead of that big left fairway. I'm surprised she doesn't throw the sidearm here. She's got a great yeah, sidearm. Yeah, she's been relying on it a lot lately too, so I was actually surprised as well. She must have had a bigger line than I could see and you know this camera work obviously shows you that line she just hit a late tree and and uh stayed a little shorter than she wanted and if you guys are wondering why they're throwing from inside the sand trap it's because it plays as a hazard which means you do get an OB stroke but you play it as it lies Madison here with her thunder pecker she gets perfectly through the gap and even down past the basket she's looking at a 15 to 20 footer uphill at it a little blocked by that uh, eucalyptus in front of you yeah they're quite a bit bigger than you give them credit for i had to throw a patent pending and didn't get quite enough turn on it um so it hit the tree on the left so now i'm left with about it 80 footer to get the birdie realistically i know 
it's chances of hitting it aren't that great so just get it close and take your par you were running that though i was kind of running it you know late in the tournament i have what 14 holes left at this point with katrina allen ahead of me you know she's not gonna mess up you know so i have to make these strokes up so i'm kind of running almost every putt this round yeah trying to make moves like you do yeah trying to and Paige here is going through the trees. This is outside the circle. She doesn't jump it, but also doesn't give it a, enough hyzer. It kind of hits that right tree, and she'll have to settle for this tap in right here. Couple tap ins for par. Yeah, and actually with Katrina going into that hazard, I will take one stroke there. So the lead will go to four, but that's still quite a bit of work to do. Although moving on to hole five, I think it's one of the hardest holes um, in the first par five that we see in this round. A lot of work to be done here. A lot of danger to still be had, especially this next stretch all the way up to maybe hole nine are some of the toughest parts of the course. And the wind has just started to pick up. Paige grabs one back there and moving on to the monster par five. Over a thousand feet. This hole's initial shot is typically a backhand power, power drive off to the right with a little bit of turn landing in the middle you can also throw up the left side the next shot's gonna have to navigate some trees and some sand traps with hopefully a shorter approach to set yourself up for the birdie onto a plateaued green yeah it's a really such a beautiful hole there's so many different elements of the game that you need in this hole um, for me i'm going biofusion defender i'm trying to put a little turn on it on the right side of the fairway um, just a little bit too high and it clips that branch and comes down to the left side. Honestly, it's actually short enough to where those trees aren't in play yet. It's, I feel like this hole is such a fine line of too much, too, too much to the left or too much of a, turning it over. You know, you gotta get your disc on an Anheuser angle so that you're on that right side and not in the trees, but... If you turn it too much, you just kind of cut roll over to the left anyway. Yeah, which is easy to do because you're throwing down a hill, trying right. to match not only an Anheuser, but also that elevation, that elevation slope down the hill. See Cat throwing a slight turn on that D2. Perfect in the middle. It's going to be a great position if it doesn't roll wow. too far there it is yeah yeah we couldn't tell about the roll but i mean that shot just even from the tee pad before you see the good roll it's it's just such a great shot i don't know if i saw a better throw on this hole in the weekend madison is throwing her strike here and puts a little bit too much turn on it um, but she does still get quite a ways down there. Unfortunately, it did cut roll to the left a little bit, so she might have to throw a bigger hyzer than she thinks. The second shot is all about avoiding that left side. There is some OB over there by uh, a building, and there are some sand traps on the right side that could catch your disc, but more of the danger is certainly on the left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i uh hitting that tree and leaving me short i hadn't practiced from there um so my depth perception was qu quite off um i actually clubbed down to a felon there and i easily could have thrown a defender i was just weary of these two sand traps that madison's heading towards um trying to make sure i stayed safe for those Ooh, and she nearly stays safe in between the two sand traps i've seen a couple people skip out of those this weekend yeah they're kind of a weird thing to to avoid because they're so small and it isn't easy really to land in them but mm -hmm. you kind of have to switch up your game plan here and there to make sure you don't hit them 
Katrina throws a wide hyzer there with a little bit of a skip, but doesn't quite get it far enough. So she should be looking at an easy birdie. Unfortunately, Ooh. I... So close. Like I said, I just hadn't practiced from there. And I was... My mind was playing tricks on me. I didn't know quite how far it was and just overpowered it. This course over and over, I found it. Um, it looked... Everything looked closer than it actually was. Right. Madison here with her star firebird. You know, this disc is over stable fairway, so she's trying to aim it wide. And as it's losing speed towards that plateau, hoping that it sits down nice and soft so she can have a chance at a putt. Katrina from that D2 approach is having to step out and throw her A2 on a chip hyzer so that she can just land safely by the basket and go for a putt from there for a birdie. It's like everybody's on the dance floor. Being the second hardest hole, followed by the first hardest hole, this is certainly an area that you really don't want to lose lose your, your wits about you, despite maybe any struggles you have. Although you all are playing this like, uh, like you're the lead card. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm just honestly trying to hit this putt. I know Kat's in a position to get a birdie, and after that drive and that approach, I mean, I was happy to save my par, but, you know, if she hits this putt, she gets that stroke right back, and we're back to five strokes separating us. So Kat with the birdie. We also saw Jessica Weiss get that birdie today, getting actually two on page with the uh, the OB stroke there. So that is a, a bit of momentum going her way into the hardest hole on the course. Bjerk is tapping out for the par, as will Madison. Two Slightly disappointed. <laughs> She's got a great putt, so I'm sure she was not happy to miss that. Trina extending her lead at minus 14, page six off the lead. Moving on to hole six. This one is only 644 feet, but it kind of plays like 750. You have an early, you have an option to take that left side wooded area, or you can throw the hyzer early right. Then your next shot, you're either trying to go over that green or lay up short of it with the following shot, depending on how much uh, you still have to go. Very difficult with that bubble green, and there's always a headwind. Katrina up first with her D1. This is 400 series. She's going wide and spiky, looking to get that skip as... As planned, she gets about three skips, and she's right in the center of the fairway. She'll have the option if she wants to get aggressive and go for the birdie three, or if she wants to play safe and just take the par. At this point, I would say she's probably going to play safe. I'm foreshadowing. Yeah, there's just no no reason to go she for got a, it. She got a putt at it yesterday um, for the birdie. Nobody has uh, gotten the birdie so far in the oh, field. Yeah. Uh, in either of these first two days. So maybe maybe she'll go for it just to say she yeah. got it. Madison, I think, has one of the best chances in our division to get this birdie. Such a strong forehand and backhand player. She's throwing for, uh, backhand through this gap. And, you know, if she can get a solid sidearm off, I think she does have the opportunity to get a birdie. I'm going with my defender here. Ghost Branch. Yeah, I actually, exactly. I didn't see it. I thought it was great out of my hand. and It looks like a confident stroke. But, you know, honestly, if you, it, it takes you two to get out. Mo nobody's really getting there yeah. for the birdie. So it's just it's I'm really, trying to get strokes at this point. I feel you. You know what I mean? Yeah, that makes every, every bit of sense. 
Paige, on the other hand, she's playing conservative. She actually grabs her judge and dissects this approach and just puts it right in front of the green with then her next shot being the aggressive one over the green. Katrina going big here. Trying to get all the way there. Yeah, she... Oh, right she onto the green. She puts a good move on it, but that disc is so overstable. That's her X1. It gets a little bit of a hyzer back, and rightfully so. The disc is super overstable. It just goes right onto the green, and that's going to be a slight setback. Um, I'm looking to capitalize here just to get up and down, and I know I'll get at least one of the strokes back. So from an early tree kick... Here you are getting yourself inside the circle to possibly grab a stroke or two from the leader. Madison goes with the layup and she'll have a hundred and fifty feet here. Yeah, this is her thunder pecker on a sidearm. It's a pretty, you know, I would say that's one of her best shots in her bag or the most accurate shots. As you can see, she's landing inside the bullseye and just such a good shot. Paige here going Heiser, actually challenging the OB um, and puts it well within the circle. Cat with a little chip, chip Heiser with her sidearm. Puts it pretty close. That looks like a bullseye to me. Bjergis for par. Little low, just a tiny bit low. The wind's flat in the flag again you know that could have something to do with it great save thank you that felt great thank i bet you. yeah i i kind of butchered this hole yesterday so it was nice to get a little bit of redemption even when hitting the early branch it's curious how difficult this whole place yeah it is cat with the single bogey after that to ob on the green it just has such this like risk reward factor where it, the reward seems so nice that it just makes you want to try for it you think we'll see this hole the same next year at the sfo i'm gonna guess they're gonna give us a different tee you think so with no birdies in the entire field the entire weekend and um yeah. few, very few even pars on the day i mean you guys got two of them there were only four others the first couple of days there were less than a handful the whole the entire time so I don't know. Some they'll consider. They're pretty. They're pretty keen on the course design out here. Next hole, hole seven, par four, 483 feet. Plays up the left side of this pathway, and then the green is tucked into the right on kind of a bubble green with some blocker trees um, early. Basically takes a nice power shot or slightly turning Anheuser for the backhand followed by a left to right sidearm or turnover to get yourself on the green. Madison Walker here with her star strike. She put it out wide with a good angle on it, but it was just unfortunately a little bit too wide. So she's going to be over there on that left side. Honestly, there's no negative of her being over there besides that the hole is now a little bit longer than it would have been if she challenged it more on the inside. little overpower there yeah maybe so but mostly the problem was just grip lock um and you know hitting that tree that hard of course it was gonna kick like that so luckily no ob over there i can still get my par it will take two difficult shots though and we have a raging headwind at this point katrina with that d2 goes wide on an anheuser and it being overstable, it doesn't really turn. It just holds that line, and we will see just how far that gets once we get up there. Bjerk is with a great shot out to the open. And you know, this isn't necessarily the fairway, so I'm kind of having to fight through some footing uh, to get this run up. Mm. 
tough, tough, tough run up. Are you, you're not trying to get there at this point. You're just trying to get as far no, as you can up the fairway. Yeah. And I also don't want to challenge the OB line on the right. So I'm just kind of aiming straight and letting the disc Kaiser out. Cause the farther you are left, the more your approach is open. Madison from about 275. This is right in her wheelhouse. This is, again, her Thunder Pecker. She just keeps it a little bit low, and it doesn't quite get that skip she's looking for. So she'll be near pin high, but quite a far putt. Bjerk is with a rare sidearm. Yeah, she actually told me after round one, you know, she came in with a hot score, and she was feeling good, and she said that she had been practicing her sidearm, and she kind of nudged me on the shoulder and said, I can't wait till you see it tomorrow. <laughs> oh, so awesome. I was really excited to see a few of them this weekend. And then her, after she successfully threw them, turned around and just kind of gave me a little, you know, nod of reassurance. So it was, it was nice. That's awesome. And this one, again, I, I'm running, uh, you know, now on hole seven, uh, it, it seems like any stroke that I can grab, I need to take the opportunity for. Yeah, and with uh, very few, there's a lot of strokes between you and third place, mm -hmm. so you're kind of on this island, only trying to push forward. Cat for birdie. Yeah, unfortunately, she missed that one. She actually landed in a good spot. See all those giant trees right there? It's, it's actually pretty hard to get an open look at it from that side of the fairway. So, um, yeah, unfortunate miss there for Katrina, but she taps in from there. So a bunch of pars, no movement. There was only one other bir one birdie on this hole today. It doesn't have a ton of score separation, but it's always a fun little hole to see how everybody throws their sidearm as we see Bjergis uh, <laughs> Got doing any so here. Critiques right there <laughs> from the slow mo. There we go. Yeah, looks good. <laughs> uh, yeah, I like I like the the hair is actually the that's the key right there. I think <laughs> definitely keep the hair down. Moving on to hole eight. This is 490 feet playing up a slow uphill for 80% of the fairway and then a steep uphill at the end past the green and the bunkers. The initial tee shot lets players either go for a longer shot, 400 plus to get inbounds, or they can lay up to a shot that's a, between two and 250 um, to give themselves a longer approach. We'll see Madison probably throwing that early inbounds area. Yeah, this is her Starfire bird. It's a fairway driver, so you know she's not trying to get over 400 feet. She's just trying to lay by that black ink disc wall, which is the safe marker. As for me, I'm going with my Biofusion Defender. I feel confident with this disc at max distance, um, just putting it over by the sand trap and letting it hyzer out. Which that is a bomb. I love how this hole gives you a chance to kind of choose your own adventure, whether you want to bite a little more off off the tee or play safe off the tee and bite a little more off on your second shot or right. simply just bite a little off each time. Yeah, I enjoy that as well. I think it's it's nice because you can either throw far on your first shot and short on your second or vice versa. Absolutely. And so even if you do, quote unquote, lay up, um, you do still have that birdie look. Bjerkis looks like she might be going for it. Yeah, she is. This is her Air Ballista Pro, which is speed 14. So you know she's going for max D. She gets that skip, and she actually does stay safe. Wow, that looks so close. It was super close. Madison with a rip and a grunt. Oh, Safe. Yeah, it was. On the skinny part. As you can see, Paige there was very close to not getting it safe, but it was. She lands that footing really well and gets it right up there. Cat with the hyzer right next to the pin. Yeah, she's got that A2 dialed for, for up shots. She just kind of puts it out wide, chips it there, and it lands on a hyzer right near the basket. And you both are right up there for the birdie putts. 
Madison with her XT Colt. This is her putter of choice. She's going for this. Ah, oh, doesn't quite get it high enough. Paige, however, does. She gets a birdie three on this monster par four. This hole is playing as one of the middle difficulty holes, but mostly because people aren't taking really big numbers on it. It's not that very many people are getting it, in fact. Here we see Cat tapping in that birdie. And so we witnessed three out of the four of the lead card get this birdie with uh, only one other person in the entire field actually got this one today, Jessica Weiss, who played really well today. We'll see if she can come up uh, from that third card and give us all a run Yeah. for that uh, third position. You know, Jessica is, uh, I think, one of the most well-rounded players in the sport. And so, you know, even though she's on third card, if she's carding birdies like this one on hole eight, no telling what's going to happen. Never count her out. Hole nine, par four, 747 feet. Extreme downhill off the tee with Obi on the right side, the pit of despair on the left side. With an approach, depending on how far down you get there, it, it can be anywhere from 150 feet to 300 feet. And here, you know, this hole typically has a lot of wind, but today we didn't quite have that much. So I chose my Ballista Pro, just trying to get it as far as I can. A little bit of a slip on the tee and kind of sent it nose up. Um, it was still a decent shot, but uh, just not quite the right angle. And when I'm chasing the lead, you know, you, you kind of are looking for perfection, especially when you're back by five to Katrina Allen. And she's throwing shots like this. Um, this is her D2. She's kind of aiming for that left side over there to make her approach a little bit more open. She doesn't seem super happy with it. Yeah, I think she wanted to go straighter for longer. Straighter. But, you yeah. know, it's still an approach that she can she can absolutely execute. I actually kind of like that left side. Paige, though, not trying to get to that left side. She's putting it out wide. She gets a big sip. Madison Walker here. This is her Star Shrike. This is unreleased currently, but this is going to be her tour fundraiser disc in 2019. So, you know, she's got to be loving it. And especially, you can tell when she throws shots like that with it. Katrina with her M2 from about 250. Maybe not the best shot selection. M2 is her stable mid, so she had to push it wide, and, you know, that brings all the trees into play. Madison from about a little under 250. Ooh. Hits the basket. Amazing Gets a little shot. roll away, but she's, she's uh, on the dance floor for the birdie. This is a little sarcasm. <laughs> it was. It was. I didn't mind the high part, but it just, you know, when you send it high, typically you put it two nose up, and I knew that that was going to jeopardize the distance I was going to get. So I left myself on the short side of the circle. Kat left herself a tester as well, though. So, you know, like I said, it, it's hard to get upset at these shots. But when you're chasing the lead, it's it's a little bit different. This hole playing the fourth most difficult in the round today. Madison here from just at the circle's edge. Little She'll have to low. settle for her par. Bjerk is following suit, but for bogey. 
Katrina trying to clean this up. And the cage is contagious, unfortunately. Contagious. <laughs> That's a stretch. And that's our front nine. We saw Katrina kind of extending her lead a little bit, and essentially Paige, both Paige and Katrina extending themselves from the field. A little battle for third place. There's a lot of scoring on the back nine. Most players can get almost every hole. So you never know what's going to happen. Yeah, it's... Uh... It's quite a bit of OB in, in play and lots of challenge, so stay tuned for the back nine and you guys will see quite the battle. As you can see, Katrina sitting at 13. Myself, I'm at nine under. So you've made up a stroke? Yeah, I've made up one stroke, four to go with nine holes to play. Paige, Madison, and Sarah are all in a tight battle for third place. So if you guys like disc golf, make sure you tune in for the back nine. Thanks to all the sponsors for supporting this coverage.